Hello. Today I'll briefly talk about a concept that I myself had theorized uh, about 10 years ago. And the concept is called inundation. And I'll post a link to the article in which I discussed this concept and used it in reading a few novels of Salman Rushdie. So basically, literally, if you look at, you know, what is the uh, literal meaning of the term inundation. It means uh, abundance of things and people in a certain area. But most of the times when we announce the word inundation, what comes to mind is a body of water, like an area inundated by huge amounts of water. <clears throat> and the term comes uh, from military strategy, where a defending force to defend against the advance of cavalry, especially the tanks, as a last resort measure would break certain dams and canals to inundate an area which would otherwise be ideal for the movement of tanks and in the process impede the progress of enemy's armor, which in you know conventional warfare was considered the most potent form of weaponry for ground warfare. So the way I uh, used it as a theoretical concept my idea was based in an assumption about how most people who may not be trained in post-colonial theory or be attuned to how to read texts from non-Euro-American cultures, there is a traditional habit, and that is that they tend to reduce the text according to assumptions, frameworks, framing, and understandings of text from the point of view of their own culture. So you could give them the most complex text about Islamic history or a novel about the Muslim world, but since they are not privy to the knowledges from those particular part of the areas where the novel is set, they reduce it with the literary assumptions that they have formed within the metropolitan culture and thus rob the text of its richness, but also very easily can misconstrue and read the text stereotypically. My point on the other hand was that as a post-colonial scholars, our job then is to make sure that a text cannot be reduced, right? Reduced systematically or through certain fixed assumptions. And hence inundation to me was kind of a bricolage that you take a novel and you don't do a huge systemic analysis of it but you just infuse it with the silenced knowledges, right? Knowledge is particular to the cultural setting within which the novel is set, so that whenever someone reads that novel and reads your article or essay or book about it, they have absolutely no possibility to reduce it, right? To a specific set of frames or a specific set of meaning making processes and that they have to account for all the silenced knowledges that you have inundated the text with. Now, I never theorize a system for it. For me, it was supposed to be a kind of bricolage and any post-colonial scholar could go into any text and suggest, all right, the author is suggesting this, but here, there is a bit of information here that I can add to this narrative to complicate it. Even things from author's own life, the author's politics, anything that would otherwise not be considered by a traditional scholar to read a post-colonial text would then be useful. Uh, for example, when I used it in reading the early three novels of Salman Rushdie, what I did was that I inserted within my reading of the novels <clears throat> certain basic historical facts about Muslims, about India, about Pakistan. The idea was to make sure that after that essay is published and if someone reads it, it gives them a more complex habit of reading these novels instead of just reducing it from the point of view of Western or Euro-American prejudices or preferences. So what did I claim there? Inundation to me was that it transforms the text from a site of arrival to a point of departure, 
I've made this claim in quite a few articles of mine. What do I mean by it? That most of the times we are trained to approach a text to learn from it, right? And so we are focused on what's in the text. To me, a novel especially should never be a point of arrival. We should not enter it simply to learn something from it. We should rather see it as a launching pad right, as a point of departure, a novel should encourage us to think beyond its setting, to go and find more knowledges about the story that it's telling. So inundating a novel in your pedagogy even, and I've practiced it, when you bring in information that may not, may have been silenced within the novel or appropriated within the novel to a certain end, what it then enables it, it makes the story, the plot, the characters within a novel kind of a place from where we can launch our imagination into the unknown and hence maybe help our students and our scholarly friends to learn more outside the novel itself. So that's what I mean when I say that a novel should not be a point of arrival, but you know, a site of departure, a point of departure. So, you know, to sum up, I would like for all of you to use uh, this term and further theorize it. What I meant by inundation then was to bring to the text anything that you think could figure prominently within the meaning making process for any reader to contest the history in it, to contest the form itself, to contest any myths that are either created within a novel or referred to and to constantly keep infusing the act of reading itself by knowledges that can complicate a flat and reductive reading of the text. And then if you do that in your teaching or if you do that in your scholarly engagement with a novel, especially a post-colonial novel or a novel written about the post-colonial world, then what you're basically doing is you're making reductive readings harder and you're rendering the text indeterminate. And you are encouraging your students to read the text with the knowledge of the outside world, with the knowledge of its worldliness in a way and their own worldliness. So that's roughly what I meant by inundation when I theorized it and used it in a couple of my essays. I will post the link below. And I do hope it's helpful and that you would you know, build on it please feel free to do so, make it into a system. And if you do so, please let me know. And if you have any questions, if you're listening to it in the audio form, post it under the, post your comments below. And if you're watching it on YouTube, similarly, post your comments below and I will try to answer your questions. And I'm deeply grateful that you always join me here and I will with some more such videos. See you next time. Thank you so much.